weeks that I'll be dealing on the Jackba syndrome. Amen. It doesn't look like what people want to hear in church, but you're going to hear. Amen. All right, if you're ready to hear the word of God, say, I'm ready. You are not. Let me hear you say, I'm ready. The one who will say it louder will receive his miracle. Oh, is that how you guys need this miracle? Amen. All right, jump on your feet as we read the Bible. We'll read just one portion of the Bible, and then I will start um, teaching the Word of God, and I hope not to waste time. I sincerely will want to stop at 30, 35 minutes. Jeremiah chapter 1, from verse 1 to 5. We'll read the... And then we stop. Jeremiah chapter 5 from verse 1 to 5. Okay, let's read together. One, two, go. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests. One verse 1 to 5. Jeremiah 1, 1 to 5. 1, 2, go. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. All right. This is actually my emphasis. Before I formed thee, I knew thee. If God knew Jeremiah before Jeremiah was formed, Jeremiah did, God didn't know the formed Jeremiah. He knew the spirit Jeremiah. I knew you before you were formed. Praise God. Our parents give us formation. But God gives us direction. Before I formed you through the flesh of your father and mother, I knew thee. It's not just I, that I knew thee. He said... I ordained you a prophet. Ordination is not by oil and the altar is one of them, but the real ordination is from God. It happens from eternity past. I ordained you. I can't remember J.J. Okocha going to any football academy. I ordained you. I'm quoting him because he's the guy I know from secondary school. Because we grew up in the same environment. But he was called to be a footballer. He was ordained to be a footballer. And history of football will never be complete without talking about J.J. Okocha. Before I formed, before I gave flesh to the spirit man, I knew you. I knew what you were here to do. I knew, I knew. And then I positioned you. Let me tell you, if you're a parent, it's a privilege to have the children that you have. Parents are vehicles through which God brought the children into the world. They are vehicles. So God positioned that child into your womb. For you to be the one to give birth to the child. Praise God. 
take it easy with me. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. The Jackma syndrome. Jeremiah 29 11. Let's go together. One, two, go. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. This is the desire of every man on earth, isn't it? To have his or her expected end. The reason why you move from Nigeria to Europe, America, is to have what? Expected end. But God said that I want you to have my expected end. Not your expected end. I know the thoughts. Let's read this from Message Bible if we can. Find it so we understand it clearer. Message Bible. For I know what I am doing. God is not confused. It might not be making sense in your eyes, but I know what I'm doing. If you see an artist in his shop, Throwing paint on a canvas. If you come initially when he's just begun, you will be wondering what he's doing. And you, what, what, what are you doing? Because sometimes you just be splashing paint and you are wondering what is happening here. And the artist looked at you and said, I know what I'm doing. It might be confusing to you, but I know what I'm doing. In other words, be patient a little bit. You will soon see what I'm doing. After all the nonsense the artist is doing, in your own estimation, suddenly that painting that started as rubbish will appear in the art gallery and they are selling it for a million dollars. And you're wondering, I knew how we started. It didn't even start like something that was going to become something. Sometimes when God's hands come on you, he starts pushing you around, starts shifting you, starts moving you. You are shouting within you and asking God, what are you doing? And I can hear him say to you, I know what I am doing. God wouldn't have said that if there was no confusion in the first place. There's a question that he was responding to. He was responding to the guy that he was forming. I know what I'm doing. It might, not be, it might not look nice, but I know what I'm doing. So what did he say? I have it all. Plan to take care of you. Not to abandon you like your boyfriend. Plans to give you the future you hope for. God will give you the future you hope for. I, I, I didn't hear a man. A man is not just a cliche. A man is a way of telling God, let it be so. God will give you your expected end. I, I don't know what the expected end is for you, but I am sure. That our God, the one that we serve, will give you an expected end. Oh, Jesus Christ. I already see that coming. I already see that coming. I see that coming. If you shout it louder, you receive it. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Tell your neighbor again the Jackba syndrome. We are living in an era and a time that things are getting very, very funny. Once upon a time in the history of Nigeria in particular, when I was a little boy, less than 10 years old, I vividly still remember that as a little boy, my mother hadn't started work as a civil servant at the time. It was only my father that was a civil servant at the time. So my mom was engaged in business and he was, she was into food stuff. And then she would go to the village market and buy gari and buy beans and buy rice in bags. I, I, I can still remember that particular vehicle that is called Austin. I, I, I don't know how many of us know the vehicle called Austin. It's a truck. 
If you know Austin, you can't be less than 40. Just raise your hand if you know Austin. God bless you. Okay, so the Austin would just park in front of our house in those days and they would float my mom's Gary Beast and the rest. And I remember as a little boy that one of the things I used in perfecting uh, my uh, uh, counting rhymes was um, selling Gary alongside my mother. Uh, you know, sometimes my mother would be busy measuring the Gary into the bag of whoever that came to buy at a time, and I would be beside her counting it. I remember that we, I, I was counting, in those days, they, were, they used to sell 18 cups, one naira. One, two, three, four. I, I would just be playing around my mom. Be, you know, I would just be counting and my mom is measuring. When we feel like I was distracted, uh, my mom will pour it back again and then we'll start afresh again until we get the measurement. So by the time you buy two Naira Gary, the woman will go with, with a big salophene walking home. All of a sudden, Things started degenerating. That one naira does not even exist anymore. So if a particular denomination does not exist, it means that what it can buy will not exist. Because the existence of a denomination is dependent on what the denomination can purchase. So the thing started getting worse. And from government to government, we were hoping that it was going to get better. From government to government, we were hoping it came down to 15. It came down to 13. It came down to 10. It came down and it kept coming down. Now, I, I, I don't think they sell in cups anymore. It's now a bucket of custard paint for how much? What? God forbid. All right. Whatever it is, that is exactly where life has brought us to. And because of this, many people have started thinking on a reflex. Because it is normal. It, it, there's an experiment if you're a physicist or a physics uh, chemistry student. One of the first experience or, um, experiments you will go through in the lab in those days is the frog experience. I don't know what they call it. Frog experience. Where they will put a frog in, 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 a, in a tube. You know, they will ask us to go catch frog. And then I stood in an environment where you can catch a dozen in 30 minutes. Okay, so we just get all that and then put it in the tube. And then put that little light behind. Let me have water. <coughs> and then they will start burning the frog. When they start heating up the tube, the frog will not shake. After a while, the frog will do what? Die naturally. They will do another experiment, heat up the tube and put the frog. And you see the frog doing what? Struggling to come out. So what is happening is that our tube, the tube called Nigeria, is being heated up. And as it's being heated up, frogs are doing what? Jumping out. Frogs are jumping out. And this jumping, I don't want to bore us with statistics, but this jumping started basically uh, from 2000. From 2000, the jumping started. As of 2015, it skyrocketed. Um, the statistics says that as of 2000, we have uh, like 400 and uh, something thousand Nigerians migrated. But by 2015, we have two point something million people migrated. So I don't want to tell you what the migration as at 2019 and then where we are today. People are migrating from Nigeria to Europe. As a matter of fact, the ones who can't even afford Europe. You know, when I look at the index of countries where Nigerians are migrating to, I was shocked to notice that after United States and United Kingdom, that the next country with the highest population of Nigerian migration was Cameroon. I was sure to my bones that even Cameroon. <laughs> the 
Because it's, 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 it's a place that we don't even think towards. Most of us will rather think of Ghana than to think Cameroon. But we have more Nigerians in Cameroon than in Ghana. So the reason for this migration is because our country is being heated up. I don't want to blame anybody. I don't want to talk about the political side of it because if I get into the political side of this, we are all the cause because every nation is deserving of their leader. We are all the cause. Every nation is deserving of their leader. So I won't get into that. So that is what is happening in Nigeria. People are moving. People are moving. Families are moving. As a matter of fact, you hear, uh, Pastor, I want to sell my car because we are leaving the country. Uh, Pastor, a time came in this church that in a particular week, I prayed for five people that are relocating. Pastor, we are leaving next week. Pastor, we are leaving. I was like, what's happening here? They are leaving. And seated right before me are people who are, <laughs> uh, people who can't wait to leave. Some are processing, some don't have the means, but it's, they have relocated in their mind. <laughs> Waiting for the next available flight so that they can jump in. If it means hanging in the wings of the aircraft, they will hang in there to leave. But let me say this. I am not and will never be against your Jaguar syndrome. As a matter of fact, many years ago, I also thought about it. So it's not like I'm talking today because, uh, Pastor, I want to talk because, uh, no, I thought about it. It was a super consideration in my mind. As a matter of fact, I started making inquiries. Thank God for law. Because at the time, I was in second year law. When I was making inquiries, I've contacted a school in, the, in Canada already. And then the school told me, what are you doing? I told them and they said to me, um, if you're studying law already in Nigeria, uh, second year, about to enter third year, that is better for you to finish law in Nigeria because if you come over here, you will start afresh. It's the starting afresh that demoralized me. And then I said, I won't go again. Let me finish the law. And remember, I am finishing the law this year. So, do you still want to jack by? I don't know. But let me speak to us. First of all, let me bring our mind back to the scriptures. God speaking to Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1 said to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, you are not an accident. This is one of the things I need you to understand about yourself. You are a product of purpose. You are not an accident. Accident means one, something that happened that was not planned for. But you are not an accident. It doesn't matter the package through which you arrived the earth. You are not an accident. You may have come through an unwanted pregnancy. You are not an accident. Your parents may not have wanted you, but God knew you were coming. You may have been a mistake by every... As a matter of fact, they may have named you mistake. In your own local parlance, in local language, your name means mistake. But let me tell you, you are not a mistake. You may also, uh, you may have encountered biological error as you were coming out of the womb. That they did something, your mother took drug, he was, she was an alcoholic, she did something, and then you came out disformed. It's your formation that is disformed. The spirit man is intact. There is no deformity in the realm of the spirit. You are a complete human being. The package may not look like it, but the purpose is intact. They might disfigure the package, but they can't do anything to the purpose. So you are a carrier of purpose. 
on the mission to accomplish the purpose. Some of us are created to fulfill a particular purpose on earth. Some of us are hammers. Some of us are caterpillars. Some of us are tractors. Some of us are legs. Some of us are limousines. Some of us are tricycles. Some of us are uh, or, or cadres. Some of us uh, are, are bicycle. We are all different products in the realm of the spirit. But the most important thing about each product is not in the name of the product. It's in the product fulfilling its purpose. When a hammer fulfills the purpose as a hammer, it's as good as caterpillar fulfilling the purpose of caterpillar. Because every man will be judged according to his purpose, not in comparison with another thing. So if I'm hammer, I will be judged as hammer. If you're caterpillar, you'll be judged as caterpillar. If you are a car, you'll be judged as car. If you're KK, you can't be blamed for not getting there like a car. You can't. Is somebody getting me? So if you understand that you are not a mistake and you're a creation of purpose, you must understand that God who made you has plans for you. The one who made you has plans for you. I know the plan I have for you. Jeremiah 29, 11. They are plan of good and not of evil to give you a hope and a future. The uh, message says your expected future. Now let's put it right. It means that if I am all this to God, when before I take a particular decision, I must check if my decision is in line with my purpose. No matter how hammer loves a fridge, fridge is the worst place to keep a hammer. I have been in workshop for too long. I have been in workshop for too long. Everything is in the fridge. I want to go to the fridge and the hammer moves into the fridge. Hammer will stay in the fridge, feel cold, but will never fulfill purpose. It will come out into the eternity, future, as fresh as it left. So what I'm saying is that before you make step to leave this country to the next place, you must check if your movement is in line with purpose. First thing, you must check if your movement is in line with purpose. Because what is basic, where is major. What is who you are? Where is the place where purpose is fulfilled? So, all of us already know ourselves. If you know who you are, the next thing to know is the location where purpose will be fulfilled. Some of us are moving abroad and leaving our purposes behind. Because purpose cannot be fulfilled anywhere. There is a place you will be to fulfill purpose. Because people are called, a person is called to a people. A person is called to a people. Joseph shared a dream with his family and he was maligned, accused of taking over from the father, sold out in slavery because of dream that he shared. Joseph shared the same dream in prison. He landed in palace. Because his purpose is not to be fulfilled in his house. So don't plan relocation with Joseph because you may interpret the dream where you're going to and it won't be accepted. So before you move, check which people am I called to? What am I here? You know, when we talk about calling people, spiritualized calling. Which people am I assigned to? Which people will appreciate what I do? Which people? My people, I dreamt and I saw, I saw, I saw. Reuben say you are stupid. Judah say you are mad. All the brothers accused him. They gathered together and said, this one can't be with us because if he's here, our hope is finished. And then Joseph 
planned his jaguar by divine orchestration and he moved. The same dream he shared. Immediately, he was told, from today, you have to have this uh, signet ring. You are just one step below me. Every other person in Egypt will bow at you. Because Joseph was called to the people of Egypt. Is somebody getting me? You are a product of purpose. Your jackpot must be in line with purpose. If it's not in line with purpose, please don't move because others are moving. Because the truth be told, people have started moving before you. You are not the first to move. Now let's begin to talk. The first thing that must happen if you must move is that your moving must be led by God. Reason is because we are not normal human beings. If you have heard from your friends that, you, I mean, you'll be nice. I mean, you look like an American. I, I remember coming to the class on an open class day to see, uh, check out my daughter. And then she came back from school that day and told me what the classmate says. That they said, is your father an American? And she said, no. He says, he looks like, a, I don't know how Americans look anyways, but he looks like an American. And then, you know, you can imagine the little girl, she was happy. Daddy, my cousin said, you look like an American. I said, no, I'm a Nigerian. <laughs> Praise God. So before you move, you must ask the one who made you. If your purpose is in line with where you are going to, we have made a scripture or we have made Christianity a thing of psychological permutation. Where you will wake up in the morning and say, I don't like Asaba anymore. Let me move to Lagos. You move to Lagos. I don't like Lagos anymore. In this church, I have seen one person who relocated back and forth. Lagos, Asaba, Lagos, Asaba, back to Asaba now. That is a pure sign of confusion. Before you move, you must ask God, should I go? That's what David said. Should I pursue them? And God said, pursue, overtake, and recover all. When Jesus was born, the country was heated. They were going through Flanny Hersmen with a different name, Herod's Hersmen. They went into a country and killed everybody that was two and below because they were looking for Christ. Joseph did not make a move because he that promised is faithful. He didn't make a move. But a day came and the angel of the Lord if you are a theologian and study, whenever you hear the angel of the Lord, you are talking about God. The angel of the Lord in the Old Testament, because they operated in the Old Testament. The angel of the Lord came to Joseph and said to Joseph, take this baby and move to Egypt until I bring you a word. Most Christians don't hear from God anymore. So you can't depend on man, you can't you can hear. That's why we move anyhow. Why? We don't have an altar that is active. We don't pray anymore. We don't depend on our altar anymore. That's why sometimes if you tell me, I like the religiosity of the Catholics. That's the Roman Catholics. I like, I like the doggedness of their religion. An average Catholic family will have an altar in the house. They will put that Mary there. So you know that anytime you face that side, you are in church. But some of us who are born again, who have come to the realization of our God, don't even have an altar. We don't have a sacred place in your, in your home. There's a particular room that you know. Once you enter, nobody knocks. 
because you are talking to your God. But we have Christians who don't hear God and God don't, God, God don't hear them. So it's time to move to Canada. Who, who, who did paper for you? Who did paper for you? Who did paper for you? You've not even asked God. Who did paper for you? So this guy is authentic. It's just that he's expensive. How, anyhow, how much is it? It's 10 million. Hey, okay, I'll sell that car now. Uh, that guy can get 7 million from the car. And then I sell that my land in Okmanam and then make it up and then we'll go. You're already deciding destiny without consulting destiny controller. And suddenly you are awful. You carry everything. And your children are saying, bye, I'm going to Canada, bye. And the man gets there and is shut off. Great preacher, shut off. There is a time that is called a time of showing off or showing forth. In the right time, he caused Christ to be manifest. He was made manifest. Remember, he was within his people for 29 years, but at the right time, he was made manifest. And we are moving like them. So the first thing you have to do before you jackpot is to ask God if this is your will. Finance does not determine the will of God. Because you can afford it doesn't mean it's the will of God. There are men who can afford a trailer load of meat, but they don't eat meat. It's not everything that you can afford that is good for your health. The way you have physical health, you have spiritual health. So that's the first consideration. When Moses, uh, what do you call him? Abraham le left his family by the instruction of who? God. God said leave. He left and saw, uh, Lot followed him. After a while, where he was camped in, there was trouble. And he also did what? God said, move. He moved again. When it was time for his son Isaac to move, after he had moved the first time, God said, Isaac, don't go anywhere. What you are running to, I will give it to you here. And that's why every one of us quote that scripture. And Isaac did what? So in that land, in Nigeria, in that land, he said, in the same year, the word year means the same season. Season of hardship. He reaped a hundredfold. Who says that people are not? There are people who are praying Nigeria should remain like this because they are making their money now. COVID made people billionaires. COVID announced people. If you doubt me, go and ask Pastor Jerry. Ezra. COVID announced people. Meanwhile, people committed suicide in COVID. COVID claimed not less than 7 million people in the world. The same thing that announced Jerry is the same thing that murdered 7 million. Ask God before you move. Why? You are a child of God. Let me tell you, but Pastor, how do I hear God? Uh, you know, I'm not used to this Christian thing. My friend, give your life to Christ. When you give your life to Christ, you start praying small, small. As you are praying and going and creating relationship, read your Bible, study, pray, study, pray. After a while, suddenly, God will have a particular word speaking to you. Because God, God has a word speaking to everybody at your level. If you are a mechanic, he will use people's car to be speaking to you. If you are a carpenter, woods to speak it to you. If you're a pastor, maybe a member that he will use, pastor, why not? Pastor, why not? Let me tell you, 50% of some things I do here come from membership. I seem to take the glory, but it comes from membership. Just like the, our, our festival of praise this year, which we have changed the name. It came from a pastor in this house. It's not from me. So the new name will soon be announced. So I can't say, I say blah, 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 Let me tell you, there are some things you need to just borrow. 
So what am I saying? If you sit down and pray in your own little way and he refuses to come, come for inquiry. Pastor, I want to go. I will sit you down. They will sit you down, ask you some pertinent questions. I know why you want to go. If you say greener, Pastor, we have more green. We have, even our flag is green. We have more green in Nigeria than anywhere in the world. Hallelujah. Praise God. Number one, you must be led of God. Number two, you must consider your purpose. Will I fulfill purpose when I get there? If you're a preacher, will I fulfill purpose? I have a friend of mine who traveled out of the country, who lives in the U.S. at the moment. Fine preacher, wonderful preacher. At the moment, he's a taxi driver. Uber. From a great preacher that God is using to an Uber driver that America is using. I have great preachers in Nigeria who relocated their factory workers. To the point, even when they're walking on the road, their hands are, because they have walked out their soul. Some of them stand security because it's not a place you will compromise. If they say stand for six hours, bros, you will stand for six hours. It's not Nigeria. I said, okay, let me use it now. At least when people start coming, I will stand. No. Oh, you man, if he says six hours, six hours, then see an African man covering two shifts. <laughs> After six months, he slumps and die. They, they will push you to the side. Another fool like you, maybe from uh, Ghana, will come and stand. Killing yourself for nothing. Because you never inquired of God. I have also seen people who left here to the place, that place, suddenly the door opened. And when I'm talking about door, I'm not talking about door of finance only. I'm talking about the door of purpose. They suddenly realize, oh, God. And God was here and I knew not. So check your purpose. Why would they have a desire to be in the fridge? Because of comfort. No. Why would they so desire to be in the hospital? What are you doing there as they saw? They will use you once. In, in, in fact, the first usage, in the next usage, they will know where they kept you. It's just like when you're, maybe you have a patient in the hospital, your, fa your father, your mother, and then they ask you to buy syringes, and you bought many of them, and after this time, you have quite a few in your house. And suddenly something happened, and you needed to pick one of two syringes. What do you do? You start looking for it, because they are in the wrong place. Some of you are in America. Purpose is looking for you in Nigeria. Some of you are here. Purpose is looking for you in the U.S. The third thing to do before you move, you must consider the culture of the people you're going to meet. Consider the culture of the people. Consider the culture of where you're moving to. Let me tell you, one of the things that happened with Abraham and happened with Isaac is the same thing. When they wanted to move to the next nearby country, they considered their culture. You know their culture? Their culture is that men of that city loves women. So when Abraham was getting into that city, by the boundary of the city, he called Sarah, say, Sarah, please, I beg. Once we enter there, you're smart. tell them, say, nah, they go kill me. Why would Isaac say the same thing? It's the culture of the people. It's people who cannot, they cannot. Once they see a new girl in town, just like some of, not, not here anyway, some, <laughs> just like some guys, they won't use eyes to see a new babe. 
Oh boy. He's just going to put perfume. Shh, shh, shh. Hello? Can I talk to you? Why new babe? Let me tell you. New babe in town doesn't make her new. Emma, you're going to you. I said, I'm going to change your base. I'm going to brand new. If you didn't hear that, I will explain. When a prostitute changes location, it becomes a brand new babe. But let me tell you, you see everything that she carried from the other location is still inside. So what you're coming to do is to keep a desolun keri. A kenyegi. You collect from where it's coming with. Where she's coming from. So it was a city that can't, can't see. They are king, can't see. It. When, I, when I do that too, I remember my great grandfather. She, he, she was the, he was the Igwe, uh, of course. I was told how my great grandfather got married. I don't know where that word went to when I was born. The way this man married, if he's sitting in, his, in front of his palace in the evening, people are passing. Igwe, you pass. Igwe, you pass. She, he will see you, young girl, passing. He asks the God, whose daughter is that? He says, it's the daughter of so-so person. He says, go and tell the father that she's my wife. That, they should, that he should fix a day I will come and pay the bride price. Now, so this man married. And then for every woman he, he married, he got a maid for the woman. And by choice, he would decide to marry the maid. The man would say, this is your maid. Yes. You know, in those days, they don't do this... Uh, a child that is your child's age mate, age mate, and you say it's a house help. No, it's grown house help in those days. Grown house help. They will come to serve. My great grandfather would say, This one is already, shouldn't be a house help anymore. Go get a house help for her and for her madam. She's now my wife. Money was, money was entering into his head. Authority. See how my father, as a young man, went to school. According to a story, he told me that he would sit in front of the palace. He goes to school with two bags, two bags, bag of book and bag of meat, fried meat. If he couldn't finish it in school, when he comes home, he stands in front of the palace, using it to stone people. I told my father, so you finish wasting money and you are leaving us in poverty. If I had been saving money for that meat, I know where I would have been by now. He would use it to stone, especially his teachers, the ones that he doesn't like. He used it. How many of you did that? And the thing goes straight. So what am I saying? Every people is known for something. Study the culture of the people you are going to before you move to them. French have culture. America have culture. Britain have culture. China have culture. Arabs have culture. Remember that during the World Cup, it was an argument whether Ronaldo will come with the girlfriend or not. And they announced that everybody should come with their wives. They don't want girlfriend. But of course, they have to bend the rule because when, when, when money talks, you obey. And then value the value he's bringing on the table is better than that religious dogma. They say, bring, do you have, how many girlfriends do you have? <laughs> he says, only one. He says, bring him, bring her, bring her. Praise God. So check, because most of our men don't consider the culture of the people we are going to. Men, let me announce to you, the culture we are moving into is a culture that a man and woman will stand shoulder to shoulder. So if you are a uh, Corellic, eh? when you say a word, it thunders like lightning. 
You are going to a culture where the woman is the one that will say in a word, it will thunder, and you will obey. So whereas you're looking for greener pasture, remember the culture of the people. That when you go there, you will be calling for constitutional conference to decide any matter in your house. It's not like the time in Africa when you are leaving the house and say, before I come back, I want to see food on my table. If you try it, you won't come back again. You won't come back. You will become homeless from that day. Because what it takes is for the woman to tell police that I don't want you around again. You will now be outside. Baby, Muki Melifa. Check the culture. Have you checked it? Have you checked your personality? While you're checking the culture, you check if your personality will, uh, will fit into that culture. Because you have a personality that can't bow to anything. I, you, you have a personality, I'm the man. I'm the man. I'm the man. I'm the head. I, I, that head, they will cut it off. You are the head. That's why people relocate and break. We have more than 50% of marriages that, that relocated within 10 years broke down. More than 50%. More than 50%. Uh, Pastor, I know the ones that have gone. Check when, when, they have, they, when they went. Give them 10 years. You will hear the story. As you are checking the culture, you check yourself. As you are checking the culture, you check your wife. A wife that has called police for you in Nigeria. Nigeria. In Nigeria. She has called police severally. And then you say that uh, things are not good here. You want to take everybody to America. My brother, see you in prison. <laughs> I'm saying this because I want to reduce my burden. I know the calls I receive. Pastor, I never knew that my wife is like this. I said, oh, you never knew. <laughs> hey. Some women use Jaguar as a revenge mission. They no go tell you. Honey, let's go there. Honey, let's go there in their mind. Hmm. If I catch you. Hmm. Let this thing be true first. Welcome to Heathrow. The woman changes. Honey, please hold this back for me. Hold it now. Why is she saying it? Police standing will look at you. <laughs> Honey, please carry this baby for me. But I'm carrying the bag now. Oh, okay, put, 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 put. Tell your neighbor, be careful. Oh. Yeah. Eh? In the, in the, be careful. Be careful. You're looking for greener pasture. But you're not checking about the safety and the sanity of the home. The next thing to consider, you must consider your children before you move. How do you want to raise them? Which culture do you want them to imbibe? Are you taking children to an environment, even in Nigeria, you haven't had Bible study with your children in the last four years. And then you are taking them to a country where they have books that is promoting gay. Where they have books talking about lesbianism. Where they have cartoons, sexual cartoons, books. With man meeting man, woman meeting woman. Books. When we were small, when we want to watch Dauda. You know Dauda magazine? You don't hold. When you pick it, you enter toilet. Why are you pretending to be good boys now like this? If I don't finish, become pastor. That means you did more than me. <laughs> so when you pick it up, you enter the toilet and be watching that. Is it Dauda? Oh, you know it. Okay. And then you're watching. Now, normal books in primary school have them. Let me tell you, a state in America and Canada have passed the law that they, are, they would take the child off the parents if the child does not allow the baby 
to decide which gender to belong and go through the necessary transformation. They would take your child. And you know an African child that doesn't know anything, does he know what a, a transgender is? He would just, the children in the class will talk and the inferiority as a black person will enter his head and say, Mommy, I want to be a woman. <laughs> and you think saying a joke. Oyibo will not look for your consent. They will carry him. The next you see your son, if Oyibo will walk out of they have started pushing things, pushing things. If you say one, okay, your son. Have you have you jackpot at that point? You see, life is jackpotting you now. Have you checked it? So I do that say don't move. I see you can move, but if you have to move, you must make out time for the children. Sit them down and keep pumping the word of God into their head because you know there is something that is being pumped from school. So as the school pumps, you encounter. As school pumps, you counter. As you're countering with the word of God, you're countering with prayer. But you myself can pray for 10 minutes. Uh, God, the Father, God, the Son, God, God, uh, uh, God uh, in Jesus' name, you move. God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the God, God, God. That's who you want to carry a child. They will go there. They will grow up. My friend said that once the child landed the United Kingdom, he turned to the father and said, why did it take us this time to come here? That is, what, what have we been doing in Nigeria? That child, does he look like he wants to come back? He don't work. Huh? Minus one. The next thing to consider, you must consider your profession. Your profession. A man who read mass communication in Nigeria is, is one to Jackpa. You study business at me, you want to Jackpa. Who, who, what are you? No, excuse me, what are you going to do there? Mass communication. You want to, you know, you, you can't even speak good. Your accent is. You want to, but to work in radio station or TV station. Or to work in a museum. Maybe a museum. Check your profession. If your profession doesn't match where you're going to, bros, sit down here. Some of them are hanging. You know. They raise money to Jagba. They are not looking for money for return. Looking for money for return. Because the guy got there and there's no work. There is no work. You, the course you read, you read, you read, you read 1976 model. And they are using 2023 model. When they set interview for you, you came for interview, you don't even know one question. Why? We don't update our educational system. That's why all of us know what is atom. Is it not? Oh, you won't know they do atom again. No? They've left there. They've left them. There is. Drop all those rubbish you read as a course. If you want to jack back and go and learn hand work. Learn plumbing. Learn carpentry. Learn driving trailer. Learn driving tractor. Learn driving payloader. And then, do you have the humility to drop it and learn that? I'm moving from house to house and doing plumbing work. Eh? Hello, sir. Can you come into the bathroom? We have a leaking pipe. Um, can you come this way, please? I, okay, ma. Okay, ma. I got him okay. 50 years. Okay, ma. At 50. You are under, you are doing, you are doing, you are doing. Are you crazy? And some of you are not handy. You are not even handy. You can't do it. 
Some of you, you already, you don't know, how, you can't drive from here to uh, Onitsha. Reason is not because you don't know how to drive, but because you don't drive long. And now you have learned to drive trailer abroad because that's the only thing you can survive on. And then you're driving from state to state, 13 hours. Three months down the line, you have had four accidents. At the end of the day, one leg amputated. You are now not home. Believe me, that woman will not feed you for too long. It won't feed you for too long. Consider your profession. The next thing to consider, consider your age. Some of you are already near retirement and you want to relocate. Except you are relocating to die. Some are near retirement. 50 and above, what are you going to tell to look for? I'm just I'm asking you. I'm asking you. God says you ask you. What, <laughs> what are you going there to do? Uh, maybe. Then do you, have you saved enough money to eat and retire? Did you retire in London? If you retire in Nigeria, will your pension and gratuity feed you for one month there? When they, when, when they are using one point something million to go and bring people from Sudan and they can't pay salary. When the same boss they hired doesn't have enough fuel to bring them home and they're in the boundary. <laughs> Aye. Uh. So these are the things you must consider. Consider your age. There is an age of hustling. 25, 40, you are in the age of hustling. Above 40, close to 45, 46, bros, <laughs> Samson will try. But the head, they don't shave them. They don't shave them. Check your age. Check your age. The next thing you have to check is return time. Because most of us are going out with no return plan. The angel said to Joseph, go to Egypt until I bring you a word. Abraham went. When the time came, he returned. Isaac went. When the time came, he returned. The whole Egypt, Israel, went into Egypt. When the time came, they returned. Return will not be in your mind until you get there. When you now get there, you see the need to return. And then you will suddenly know that return is impossible because you're going to return alone. Because your children are their peak, enjoying their life. And if you talk about Africa, it's like you want to poison them. And then a man will give birth to five children to, to Americans and then come home with grandma as a souvenir. And then he's now in the village, four bedroom bungalow. He was able to build while there, loafing around the bungalows, speaking, man, man, nobody to give you water in the old age. You will stay in that bungalow and die, and nobody will know after three days when you will start stinking. And they will know that man has died. And they will break the door and bring out men and bury you, man. Where do you want to spend your old age? And then, if eventually say, I want to stay abroad and die abroad and live abroad, what am I coming back for? Remember, you are going to end in old people's home. Old people's home. Your children now have imbibed a new culture. So, because all their classmates from primary, secondary, university, their mothers and fathers are in the old people's home. And then you are going to join them there. When you join them at 75 or 70, you will start remembering me and some of us here in Nigeria. Because Oibo man can't flow with you. They can't flow with you. There is no past to discuss because you don't have your past there. The people you have past with are over there. Any opportunity to call any of your friends in Nigeria that is still alive, you feel like somebody that is poured cold water on. You, they, you, but your children will not let you go. Papa, mm, mm, no, no, you can't go there, you can't go there. And then they are the ones controlling you. So by the time you stay in old people's home for five years, you will call yourself home. You will, you will settle yourself. You say, I'm going home. You will call death and death will come. 
The next thing to check, have you checked your tenacity to resist racism? Have you checked your racism resistance level? You will not understand. What you see in his skyscrapers, you are not seeing the snobbish nature of an average white man that will get up from the bus because you entered. That will get up from the seat because you are sitting beside him. He will do it politely. But abuse is abuse. Racism is racism. It will hit you to your marrow. Because to the person you are looking at who stood up from the chair because of you is thinking. Stinking, but for the fact that he has that burnt skin, he will get up. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. He will go and stand. And you watch yourself in the train or watch yourself in that bus. People will be coming down to sit and coming down to sit and your chance will be the last standing until a fool like you who was already located, maybe from Congo, will enter the bus. And come by your side and stay. Two of you will now. <laughs> and continue your misery. Together. Hey, my brother, where are you from? It's Congo. Oh, Nigeria. <laughs> All right, where do you live? Oh, I live in the, this and this. Are you ready to handle that? If you fight it, you go to jail. I have a daughter here who traveled out in the medical field. In her medical field, if not that I stood my ground, I said, daughter, you are not coming back. She almost came back. Because in her office, everybody is Oibo. And they were dealing with her. She would do a thing they would condemn. She would do, they would condemn. She would do, she would enter bathroom and cry. What did I do? Skin. And you, you want to go. Until we kept praying. Anytime I speak to her, I say, God will change it. Less than one month ago, she called me and said, God have turned it around. That I was given a word. I'm one of the best in my office now. But it took resistance, encouragement, improvement to get to that level. To get to that level. One of my daughters got there and joined the military. And suffered racism in military. But wisdom made her hold her head high because they messed her up. Today she's being celebrated within the rank and file because she endured. Can you endure? Because some of you will hook the person's neck and say, If you don't take time, I will kill you here. And you think if you say that thing, they will take it like us. Like us, they will say, um, bros, leave that, you're not going to do anything, and matter ends. Once you say that, I'll kill you here. <laughs> Five minutes, police will come. You will go and prove how you want to kill her here. Before you know it, a year and a half in prison. And you will be shocked. Your children will be, they will even have time to come for you. His phone call, and then once in a month, they will come and sit behind the glass. Dad, with our phone, why did you grab? Let's close, please. I've said it before, you must put a time frame for your return if you want to, Jagpa. And that time frame for your return, remember you are no longer the one who will decide it. Because you can put a time frame for return here. Your partner will say, yes, when that time comes, we'll return. I have seen families that got there when the time of return came. The partner said, I'm not returning. If you want to return, you return. And you can't do anything. Have you considered your children, your children calling police for you? Here, when you talk, everybody, quietness unto the Lord. They will learn to challenge you. Dad, enough, please. Dad, enough, please. And then when they're saying it, they're not looking at you. Because in Nigeria, when they're say, saying a thing that you don't like, they are moving. There, they are backing you and saying it. It's trap. 
and you feel that uh, am I not their father again? Boom. Police. Let me tell you, it's so bad that a phone with no airtime can call police. That's how fast they want you in prison. <laughs> a phone with no, no airtime. Once you dial that 911, it will ring straight. It doesn't even hang. No network issue. Poo, poo. Hello, this is Metropolitan Police, Charlton. Are you okay? No, I'm not okay. My father just spanked me. Are you okay? Where are you? Can you move out of where he is? I know he's a bully. Because by your voice, by your voice, they know you're a black person. Wah, 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 wah. Four, police, four police vehicles in one house to take one chimpanzee that was released from African Zoo who ended up in the streets of America. They end you up. My first cousin, the child called police for him. Hi. Five minutes. Police don't they do. My first cousin, I don't know where to enter him. He called the child in, in, in his Igbo name. Say, be won't give If these people take me away from here, you will see yourself in Nigeria. Before he finished, as he's getting up, he's facing police. He said, hey, come on, come, come. Are you okay? What happened? He said, oh, sorry, it was a mistake. No, no, I don't believe it was a mistake. Are you okay? Tell me. Did he spank you? Did he beat you? Did he talk to you harshly? He said, no. I said it was a mistake. He said, okay. You know you are free to call us any moment? Once you just feel unsafe, call us. The guy said, hmm, call them. You know, when you remove Fune in your English, <laughs> the matter serious. And call them. Do you still want to, Jackba? See, see, see. The essence is not to discourage you. Never. The essence is. See, Joshua said to the people of Israel, This day I have presented before you life and death choose one. But he said for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. So it's a decision. It's not discouragement. It's for you to know because you have to count the cost before you get into it. In case you don't know what to title the message, the tendencies of relocating abroad. That's what it is. That's the tendencies. Appreciate the Lord if you